Right, let's turn to the Lord uh, in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful story. And I guess even if we've been following you, Jesus, for a long time, it's, it's very, very easy to sort of think, well, it's just a story. Um, but it's not just a story. It's historical. It happened. And we want to, to, to confirm our faith again, affirm our faith in your word and the truth of it. And for this wonderful historical event, the coming of God in flesh to this planet Earth. Uh, with one purpose in mind, really, to go to the cross, bear our sins and rise again to give us the hope of new life. So we thank you again for our children and pray your blessing on them now as they have a bit of refreshment together and just a fun time together. Lord, uh, continue to give them joy uh, through this coming week. And we pray for ourselves, Lord. We pray that we might be bearers of good news to somebody this week. And it may be taking that little tract and giving it to a neighbour. It might be just a conversation over a coffee. But Lord, sometime this week, we pray that we might have the opportunity of sharing something of the truth of this story, the impact of it. And Lord, what the story means now for us, that we can know Jesus, your son. We can know you, God, for ourselves. So I want to thank you. Thank you for that incredible event and as we celebrate it over the next week or two help us always to have that in mind lord however hectic life becomes all the all the glitter and the glitz lord just help us to focus on you too i want to pray today lord just impromptu really for the ongoing situations in ukraine and in israel and gaza and it's going to be a very unhappy Christmas for an awful lot of people. And we just pray, God, that somehow, even if only on this holy day, there would be peace around the world. There would be peace in Ukraine. The firing of shells will stop. The rockets and bombs will cease. And that there will be peace over the Christmas period. We long for a permanent peace. And we pray that, pray for that, Lord, both in the Ukraine situation and in the Israel-Gaza situation. But we do feel for people who have lost their homes, for people who've lost many members of their family, for people who are struggling to find enough food to eat. And we shall be living in secure homes, warmly heated by our heating systems and enjoying wonderful meals together. And on the other side of the Mediterranean and in Europe, uh, Ukraine, there's unhappiness, there's sadness, there's want, there's need. And we just want to pray for those situations today. Help us to not just think of them uh, in a service like this, but through the week. Lord, may they be in our thoughts and may we be continually lifting up your people particularly. And we just pray that you'll be with them in a very special way and you will be Emmanuel to them this Christmas. God with us in that very special way. So Lord, with these few thoughts I'm about to share, I just pray that you will speak. It's a little bit unusual, but I just ask you, Lord, that you will speak to us all, encourage us and bless us, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> so, we have the first slide, Sam. I'm wondering if any of these scenes look familiar to any of you. They are lifted from adverts that you may have seen on television this Christmas. Who can tell me which two of our high street stores these adverts are from? Just shout out the names of the two stores. m and &S, Marks and Spencers. What's the other one? John Lewis. Someone said it very quietly over there. So those were advertisements from Marks and Spencers and John Lewis, two of our largest and best-loved chains of department stores. And each Christmas, these two great companies seek to produce the most loved Christmas television ads. It's been going on for some years. And on YouTube, you can watch them both if you've not seen them. And uh, they, they become very popular, some more so than others. But the question I'd like to answer this morning is this one, in less than five minutes, which one this year 
best reflected the true Christmas story? Spencer or Lewis? Okay. Here in less than half a minute is the theme of the Marks and Spencers ad, if you haven't seen it. So it represents Christmas traditions, such as making homemade presents, such as carefully decorating the tree, thanks Sam, and playing games with the families, all of which are time-consuming things, aren't they? But in this advert, they become irritating things. They become boring things. So they all need to go in order that this Christmas, thanks Sam, you only do what you love. You do only what you love. Never mind the family. Never mind sitting down and playing a fun game with the family. You know, never mind taking a little bit of care over what you're giving to people. Never mind decorating the tree nicely. Just do what you love. And it finishes actually with a further poke at the true message of Christmas by adding that this should, that you should really love this mass this kind of Christmas, the m and kind of Christmas, not that Christmas, the less selfish, others-centred kind of Christmas. What an appalling surrender to the spirit of the age. How that sums up so much of our society and culture today. So what about John Lewis? Was there anything in that advert, any hint of Jesus in their seasonal offering this year? Well, yes, there was. And I'm not saying it was intentional, because probably it wasn't. But for those of us who know the Bible story, for those of us who recognise the Bible's imagery, for those of us who love and follow and serve the Bible's leading character, there is more than a hint of Jesus in the tale of the flycatcher Christmas. It begins, in case you haven't seen it, with a young lad. And he's out with, I think it must be his grandmother, and they're shopping in a market, and he finds this little tin with this on the front. Perfect Christmas tree. Grow your own fast-growing Christmas tree. So where is, where is the Messiah in that? Where in the Bible is Jesus referred to as a seed? Believe it or not, in the Bible's third chapter, Genesis chapter 3. This is widely considered to be the very first reference to a coming saviour, a coming deliverer and messiah. Here's a reminder of it. Verse 14, the Lord God said to the serpent, having caused the fall by tempting Adam and Eve, the Lord God said to the serpent, because you've done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Here it is. And between your seed and her seed, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Who is the only human who could be said to have crushed Satan's head and will finally crush his head for good? It's Jesus who became human in the incarnation that we've been celebrating in the nativity. So the boy plants the seed and the seed quickly begins to grow and it produces branches. So where is Messiah referred to as a branch? Well, again, it's widely thought that Isaiah 11 and verse 1 is another Messiah-related prophecy. And here's what Isaiah 11 one says. It says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse and from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Who was Jesse? Jesse was the father of King David. From whose line did Jesus come? The line of David. He was the branch who will bear fruit coming up from the stump of Jesse. Jesus would finally come and fulfill that prophecy of Isaiah, made some 600 years before Jesus was born. Stay with me on this, because next we find that the plant becomes so big so inconvenient, starts gobbling up things. It's actually a huge Venus flycatcher and it stops gobbling up stuff and it becomes very inconvenient and it's pushed out into the frost-covered garden. In other words, the plant is rejected. Remind you of anything? Didn't John say of Jesus, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him? 
Christmas Day comes and everyone's opening presents. So the lad goes out into the garden with a gift for the plant and lays the plant, uh, sorry, lays the gift at the feet of the plant. And the family follow. Seeing this little boy's love for his plant, the family follows and they bring their gifts, which the plant quickly swallows. And then how does the plant respond? It coughs up gifts for everybody. It showers the family with blessings, turning it into the best ever Christmas, which is what Jesus does. As we bring our gift, the gift of ourselves to him and lay ourselves at his feet, he takes us into himself and he gives us the greatest gift ever, which is his own presence in our lives and showers us with blessings. John said this, as I finish, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the gift of the Lord Jesus. As we come today and we lay ourselves before him, he takes us into himself and he gives us his life. He shares his life with us and all the blessings that come with that. So they're hidden in the John Lewis advert. I'm I'm not sure they even know it, is the message, the true message of Christmas. Okay, what I'd like to do is just...